So I asked my community to comment their favorite anime villains under this post and I would rate them on a tier list. And if I rate a villain lower than B tier, I'll expose some of my worst anime takes. Now I was really surprised because there was a plethora of absolutely base takes. Y'all make me so proud. So because of that, this is my criteria for my tier list. Any villain that's in my personal top 5 is going into S tier. Anime villains in my top 10 will be in A tier. And top 20 villains will be in B tier. Anything below that, well, you know. So without further ado, let's run it. First we got Gilgamesh from the Fate series. An absolutely legendary villain. He's entertaining, has an interesting ideology, and my guy has some crazy riz. As our first villain, I feel feel very comfortable putting him in B tier. Up next, we got Shigaraki. Now in my opinion, he isn't the best villain in My Hero Academia. I think Twice, Toga, and Stain are much better. But Shigaraki is still that guy, and his development has been pretty great, so I'll put him in B tier as well. Ah yes, Aizen. Daddy Aizen. Aizen is one of the greatest villains in all of anime, if not the greatest. For me, he's one of the few characters that doesn't have a backstory and that actually adds to his character. Because it's up to the viewer to analyze and dissect Aizen for who he is. And this guy is a walking tragedy and I absolutely love it. So it looks like we got our first S tier villain. Next we got our favorite blonde vampire. No, not you Shinobu. It was I, Dio! <laughs> oh, how I love Dio. What's great about Dio is that he's the true protagonist of JoJo's. He's in pretty much every part. Or he's impacted that part in some sort of way. Now my favorite Dio is Diego Brando from Part 7, who coincidentally has one of my favorite stands in JoJo's. He's definitely a top tier villain, well deserving of A tier. Next up, we got Ukiora. And coincidentally, he's my favorite antagonist, villain, whatever you want to call it, in all of anime. Every bit of his character writing is perfection. It was something I truly resonated with. His misconceptions of what is a heart, his struggle with his ironic inner humanity, and his dichotomy with Ichigo which just pushes it to the next level. In my opinion, Ukiyora is a level above Aizen. And he has one of the best character conclusions that I've ever seen in fiction. So he's not just going into S tier, yeah, he's going baby, to the top of S tier. That's what I've been waiting for. Don Quixote do Flamingo. Wow, what a fantastic villain. He's one character with absolutely amazing buildup. How he's positioned to Luffy as an ideological and thematic counter is brilliant. He's an incarnation of pure evil, a puppet master, but at the same time, he's also a puppet. And while I truly want to put him in S tier, I can't. Simply put, because I think Katakuri and Blackbeard are better villains, so I'll put Doflamingo in A tier. Zabuza from OG Naruto. Wow, this is going to kill me. What do you mean by that? He's a great villain, and under normal circumstances, he would be an obvious A tier. But in contrast to the other villains in Naruto, he barely makes the top 5. So I guess this is my first anime hot take. The ending of Attack on Titan was near perfection. It completely falls in line with every theme the story was perpetuating. I loved the intense realism integrated into the narrative. And once the last season of the anime wraps up, I'll make a video explaining why. Next we got Oscalod from Villain Saga. An S tier villain, but per this video, I'm putting him in A tier. He exemplifies the path that Thorfinn would have walked if he stood by his rage and hatred. Simply put, he was with the Viking lifestyle. He lived and died by his will and saw honor in Valhalla. He worked for himself as a mercenary and was completely fine with committing countless atrocities. Oscalod was never actually evil, he was simply a subject of his environment. Next we got Madara. Wow, I might get hate for this one. Because I'm putting him in B tier and at the very low end of B tier. He's a great character who was absolutely ruined by a terrible conclusion. For a great character, their beginning and end must match equally. I mean, look at the way Madara enters the war versus the way he exits. It was such a slap in the face. And honestly, bad character writing. Next we got Poochie, and just like most JoJo villains, he's fantastic. His ideology of heaven and destiny was absolutely brilliant. How he masked his selfless intentions with selfish exploitations. This is an easy A tier for me, and I'll put him above Dio. Next we got Kiyotaka Ayanokoji. 
For those who don't know, he's my favorite anime character of all time. And yes, he's a protagonist, but he's kind of walking that light and lelouch path where you're not really sure if you can root for him or not. Especially with some things he's done that definitely borders the moral gray. So easily, he's going to the top of S tier. Next we got Obito, who's actually my second favorite character in Naruto. Obito is a very interesting character to me, because he was involved in every major plot point in Naruto. He's the embodiment of emptiness and nihilism, a literal ghost of his former self that can pass through anything and anyone. And he's a fantastic character foil to both Naruto and Kakashi, so I'm putting him at the top of A tier. The classic Team Rocket trio. This is the most base take I've seen all day. It's so legendary, it belongs in its own category, and I'm calling it W tier. Arlong from One Piece. Interesting, because he's quite a good villain. But according to my criteria, I have to put him in C tier, even though I don't want to. So this is my second anime hot take. Dragon Ball is the worst long-running shonen of all time. For me, it's at the lowest end of the spectrum. Next we got Logan Paul, I mean Buggy, and that's another extremely based take. I think we all see a little bit of ourselves in Buggy. He's one of my inspirations because he's the first One Piece content creator. So just like Team Rocket, I gotta put him in W tier. Oshino Ogi. Wow, what an interesting take. For those who don't know, she's one of the main antagonists in the Monogatari series, which is coincidentally one of my favorite anime of all time. Now, talking about her actual identity reveal is a massive spoiler, so I won't get into it, but she's definitely an S-tier antagonist. Next, we got Gein from Bleach. You know, he's a cool character, but in contrast to every other villain, he's definitely one of my least favorites. So, I have to put him in C-tier. The Boruto manga isn't that bad. Yeah, I know, pretty surprising, especially for the guy who dogs on Boruto every chance he gets. But that's specifically the anime. The manga was actually an enjoyable read. Most of that goes to Kawaki, who's actually a very good character, but if you don't like Boruto, I recommend reading the manga, then making an opinion about it. Eren Jaeger from Attack on Titan. Yup, S tier villain, no question. Once Eren got on his villain arc, he became such a great character. Attack on Titan has a very rich and extensive plot, and I still felt like Eren was carrying the series. I also loved the ironic realism of his representation of freedom. Because since the beginning of the story, Eren was never free, and like Kenny Ackerman stated, everyone is a slave to something. And for our last villain, and this is Black Clover spoilers by the way, Julius or Lucius. And sadly, I'll have to put him in C tier. Simply put because I expected it. The plot twist was predictable. It doesn't make it bad, but you could see it coming. And he doesn't really compare to anyone else on this list. So I guess it's time for my last hot take. One Piece's length is its greatest strength. I think it's one of its greatest assets. Because once you get into the story, you never want the journey to end. I've been caught up to the manga for a couple years now, and it's painful having to wait for new chapter releases. The fact that it's long is great, because that means there's that much more to enjoy. But of course, I know many disagree. Anyways guys, if you've made it this far, thanks for watching the video. I really enjoyed this video, and I loved interacting with my community. If you guys want to see something like this again, please let me know.